Hello everyone and welcome to course. And this one we are going to discuss about uh, how multi spectral analysis especially involving several bands that means multivariate analysis can be done in digital image processing. So, in this uh, we will be uh, going through the scatter plot, two dimensional plot, uh, band ratio analysis, principal component analysis and decorrelation stretch. So, these are the topics for this first uh, what is basically multivariate uh, image statistics because uh, we know that the remotes most of the remote sensing data is acquired in multispectral form that means lot of bands data is coming and therefore we need to analyze that data so it is uh, often concerned with the measurement of how much radiant flux is reflected or emitted in case of uh, thermal infrared from an object in more than one band because uh, this is the main thing is not a single band analysis where a histogram is more than sufficient and uh, uh, stretching options are also simple, but when we go for multi bands or multivariate analysis things becomes little complicated. So, it is useful to compute uh, multivariate statistical measures such as covariance and correlation among several bands to determine how the measurements uh, co vary. This is required. Uh, because uh, if there are say 7 or 8 bands in a one uh, scanner or sensor, then uh, uh, many of these bands might be highly correlated to each other. And uh, so that uh, whenever we are going for some color combinations or composites, we need to have those images which are uh, different than each other. And therefore, the bands which are correlated to each other uh, may be dropped in color composite. So, this kind of analysis will allow us to understand and uh, select the relevant bands. It includes uh, this multivariate analysis as I have mentioned earlier, band showing techniques which we will discuss several limitations and advantages with uh, band ratio principal component analysis very popular one PCA, feature selection classification and accuracy assessment. So, mainly uh, image transformation and that is uh, multivariate that uh, image transformation typically involves the manipulation of multiple bands of data whether from a single multispectral image or from two or more images of the same area acquired at different times that is multi temporal data image data. So, that can also be analyzed in this way and either way the image transformation generate new images from two or more sources which highlight particular features or properties of interest better than the original input image. In, in case of single uh, band images most of the things which we have been doing through the LOTs and uh, maybe uh, in some cases new images may not be generated, but in a multivariate analysis these things are there. So, first very simple multivariate analysis involving more than one band may be the image division or band a uh, band division. So, the most common transforms applied to image data that is image division on pixel by pixel basis carried out the following operations. For example, band 1 divided by band 2. So, a new band is generated and resultant data then rescale to fill the range of display because uh, if you divide the number of uh, the range of pixel values will might reduce and therefore, you want to rescale to the display uh, range that is between 0 to 255 in most of the cases. So, this is very much required in most of these multivariate uh, analysis uh, this rescaling is the last step which has to be done every time. And uh, this uh, image division is applicable commonly also called a band ratio and very, very popular technique which we will see. So, mathematically basically if you look that uh, uh, V V i j r equal to V V i j k divided by V V i j l and in this one uh, V V i j k that is the brightness value at the location line i pixel l j and k band of imagery. That means, uh, the band uh, the band 1 in this case k equal to 1 we can consider. 
So, band 1 and each pixel basically this division will be made pixel by pixel. So, that is why locations of both uh, pixels are given in all uh, these two bands K and L and output band is the ratio image which is given denoted here as R. So, this uh, L is the brightness value of the same location in band L, the corresponding pixel will be divided this one has to remember and the ratio value at the same uh, location that is the in, in case of output image and in uh, denominator is 0 if B end up then denominator uh, BV is made 1 because there might be a situation when uh, this uh, uh, the band L that means maybe band 2. Uh, when we create the ratio the value becomes uh, infinite so we rescaled uh, to 1. And what are the applications of uh, uh, ratio major one is to remove the shadow effects induced by the rugged topography and uh, to basically our ultimate aim in all these image processing techniques to improve the image interpretation. So, our images becomes much better for interpretation. So, this is what the undesirable effects on recorded radiances that is the variable illumination caused by the variations in the topography. In daytime if you are if you are working in a hilly region then one one slope of the valley might be illuminated the other one may, may be in the shadow and this kind of uh, effects uh, uh, this uh, uh, differential uh, solar uh, illuminations uh, can cause uh, uh, difficulties while making image interpretations. So, if we imply uh, band ratio techniques then uh, these effects can be minimized that is the effects of topography due to the difference here uh, solar illuminations. Sometimes differences in uh, BB that is uh, band values from identical surface materials are caused by topographic slope and aspect shadows or seasonal changes. So, all these the orientation of slope and with reference to the position of the sun will play a major role here. And these conditions hamper the availability of interpreter as I have already mentioned to correctly identify surface materials or land use in a remote sensing and ultimately it will affect our interpretation. And ratio transformations can be used to reduce the effect of uh, such environmental conditions which are present in a hilly regions especially. Uh, here is the example is given here that uh, one side of the slope is uh, illuminated on this left side whereas on the right side of the slope is in dark and therefore uh, like in digital numbers of different uh, features. Uh, which are given here like for the, the slope which is uh, in band A might be having a pixel value of 48 in case of band B 50, but when the, we create a ratio it becomes 0 0.96. Of course, uh, the pixel value has to be in ratio image has to be integer value. So, it is rescaled later on to make a, a rescale uh, to integer. Uh, same like in case of shadow in band 1 band A or band 1 it is just 18 whereas in band B it is 19. So, again ratio is uh, getting quite close as ca in case of sunlight and shadow and therefore, the effect of shadow is getting reduced. Another example this is the uh, this was the from deciduous trees forest or vegetation then you are having examples of conifer trees that uh, here the in case of uh, sunlitted uh, slope in case band 1 it is 31 pixel value in case of band um, 2 or band B it is 45. So, ratio comes 0 0.69 and in case of shadow again 11 and 16 ratio comes 0 0.69. So, when you, we will make the integers values then these values are coming very close whereas in original bands these values were at very far and this this is what the advantage we are removing the effects of shadow which is has been which has been caused due to the presence of rugged topography. So, even if we are having same cover type no problem and if you are having different cover types then uh, different depending on the which uh, features are there or which land. Uh, cover are there uh, that uh, that will 
and reduce the effects of topography. Radiance at shadow is only 50 percent of radiance of sunlit as in many cases we are seeing here generally and the ratio nearly identical whereas the end result becomes identical and hence removal of topographic effects. Now applications of shadows may be uh, that radio, uh, ratios uh, may provide unique information not available in any single band because two bands information are being uh, used and a ratio a simple mathematical technique and ratio discriminate uh, subtle spectral variations and it contains aspect of shape and spectral reflectance curve of different earth surface covers can be brought out of by ratio. Ratios are independent of absolute pixel values and ratios can be used to generate false color composites by combining three monochromatic ratio data sets. That means if you are having many many bands you can create ratios of two uh, different bands having three output. So, three ratio outputs these three ratio outputs can be combined and can be created a color composite. So, it is a, a multi bands ratio. So, instead of involving just three bands in this, um, uh, 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 this uh, ratio color composites you would be involving six bands and less effects of topography and therefore, the image interpretation may become very reliable. So, ratio clearly portray the variations of slopes of spectral reflectance curves between two bands and bowls. Here is the example here uh, like in case of Landsat TM you know that uh, they these uh, they are covering first in the visible part then band 4 is in the near infrared part then band 5 is the middle infrared far and then band 7 is uh, 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 you know in far uh, basically far infrared. Now, uh, band uh, here band 6 is not mentioned because band 6 is thermal. So, that is not being considered in this particular uh, slide. Now, different uh, objects which are present on the earth their spectral curves would be different in different bands this is what you are seeing. So, if I create a ratio between say band 4 and band 3 then I am I am not only removing uh, the topographic effects, but I am involving two bands and the uh, same time because here the vegetation is making major change here. So, in this spectral curve and therefore, these bands and this kind of band ratioing will help us. Similarly, wherever the major changes are there in case of vegetation, in case of uh, dry soil or wet soil or water bodies turbid water bodies and so on clear lake water bodies they all behave differently and uh, ratios can exploit that one and you can have a better output image for uh, reliable interpretations image interpretations. Uh, uh, for example, which bands to ratio example this is what uh, in the previous figure I was mentioning that the healthy vegetation reflects strongly in near infrared because of high chlorophyll content and the spectrum of, of uh, while absorbing strongly in the visible red. As you can see here that healthy vegetation uh, will have a high reflectance in near infrared in case of Landsat TM band 4 whereas uh, in red band of Landsat uh, TM that is in band 3 you do not have much reflection and this is this is what that the healthy vegetation reflects strongly in near infrared portions of a spectrum while absorbing strongly in the visible red and because of this sharp curve we can exploit. So, other surfaces types such as soil and water so near equal reflectance in both near infrared and red portions. It is not necessary that all objects or all kind of features which are present on the earth will behave differently. Vegetation behaves differently, water body, dry soil, wet soil, they all are having different spectral curves. So, we need to uh, understand the spectral curves and accordingly we should choose the band and then create the band ratio. Thus, the ratio image of near infrared uh, divided by uh, red uh, would result in ratio much greater than 1 for vegetation and ratios around 1 for soil and water. 
and this is that is why I was mentioning that where the curve has uh, is a there is a sharp change in the curve those two adjacent bands will give you much better results. Thus the discrimination of vegetation from other surface cover types is significantly enhanced in such ratio outputs. And also we may be better able to identify areas of unhealthy or stressed vegetation, vegetation suffering from uh, lack of water or maybe disease or something. These uh, by implying this ratio you can clearly identify uh, the health of the vegetation. We show low near rain for a reflectance, there is a shift then if healthy vegetation less chlorophyll content it will the curve will shift towards the red and the ratio would be lower than the healthy green vegetation. So, implying such a band ratio technique even in case of vegetated areas the health of vegetation can also be assessed easily. And uh, this is an example of uh, real example that this is infrared channel this is these are from IRS list 3 and this is the red channel and as you can see that this is the vegetated area which is coming dark in red channel whereas in uh, infrared definitely it will have a better uh, illuminated part or have high brightness compared to red part. But when we create a uh, ratio then all the features which are present become much more clear. Second thing is you will observe that the effect of topography especially in this hill part which is the Sivalix in this um, here they will uh, the that has been reduced and you see this image which is more or less uh, quite representing a flat terrain, but we know that it is not flat, but for interpretation it might be better for uh, certain applications. So, that is a big advantage that the discrimination power of the output image becomes much higher, much reliable uh, in uh, compared to inducible bands if I would have been using. So, that is the advantage of band ratioing. When the band ratio of two bands as have been mentioned uh, removes much of the effect of illumination in analysis of spectral differences. And this is possible because the composition between two geologic units for example, limestone which is grey white and uh, in red bed which is the red determine the ratio of any two bands whereas the illumination determination magnitude of the DN received by the satellites. And here is the example this is the sun and the energy is coming it is getting reflected. So, if you are having uh, this is the illuminated part. So, uh, and uh, this is the red band this is the limestone and they are be, they are giving different different reflection as you can see 46, 23, 23 and likewise. And uh, how about the areas which are having haze or uh, atmospheric distortions or uh, having uh, this uh, because of relay scattering and uh, this these numbers from these rocks or reflection from these rocks is reduced significantly uh, roughly half. So, in the significant uh, in the, however, in the areas with significant haze the performance of ratio is much improved by removing the haze produced by relay scattering in the atmosphere. And therefore, band ratioing when we find that there is a haze then we can imply again band ratioing to improve our images. So, the product image the ratio image will have the less effect of uh, scattering uh, because that is causing uh, the haze. So, release scattering effects can also be minimized. And this is the example here and uh, that uh, uh, this is the band 1 blue radiation shows strong topography effects where the ratio of band 3 by band 2 removes much of the effect of illumination and yield differences of rock. And here uh, you cannot identify different rocks very clearly and the effect of topography is very much dominating. But here the effect of topography has reduced whereas the discrimination between two rocks or many rocks have increased. So, that is the advantage of uh, band ratioing. Another example uh, about the color composites. So, these are the two band ratios 5 by 2 and 7 by 4 involving Landsat TM data and here that all these three are in RGB that is the color composite of band ratios. So, 3 by 2 
which goes in red channel, 5 by 2 goes in green channel, 7 by 4 goes in blue channel. And when we put, we get a output image, now you compare this output image either with 5 by 2 single or 7 by 4 which are involved here, but you do not get that kind of discrimination power uh, of different features which are present then in this uh, color composite of band ratios. So, it is a very good uh, uh, tool in image processing to exploit the maximum variations which are present in different bands and can uh, and create a new product. Here uh, band 2, band 3, band 5 and band 4 and 7. So, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 7, 5 bands uh, characteristics variations have been incorporated in this color composite and normally we can only incorporate about 3 in a standard false color composite. So, that is why it is giving much better results. Uh, now, little advanced uh, band swing techniques and the, that we end up uh, just not by, by dividing, but making more uh, different combinations or bringing little more arithmetic in it and uh, that is very popular one is called normalized difference vegetation index or NDVI and uh, it is for uh, using uh, course relatively coarse resolution data like NOAA VHRR or MODISH uh, data global at global scale and DVI maps are being used. So, we can assess uh, that what is happening to the vegetation cover globally and in this one the near infrared band is subtracted by red band and this hole is divided by near infrared plus red band and uh, that it will what NDVI will do it will bring uh, highlight the health of vegetation. So, we are increasing red show stress vegetation and VNIR that is very infrared band shows chlorophyll and that is why these two bands are involved in this normalized difference vegetation index. Uh, here is a the example like this is the healthy vegetation on right side you are seeing the vegetation uh, which is uh, uh, not having much uh, chlorophyll. So, here in infrared the reflection is coming about 50 percent and in visible just 8 percent. But when we go for a dry leaves or vegetation which is suffering uh, from stress, maybe lack of water or some disease, then the near infrared reflection has reduced here by uh, roughly 20 percent and uh, whereas, visible reflection has increased very significantly from 8 to 30. And if we see the ratios, then see this is a healthy vegetation ratio is 0.72. Whereas, in case of a, a, a not healthy vegetation, a vegetation under distress is just 1.4. So, that is the advantage that you can assess uh, in a vegetated area the vegetation which is suffering uh, from stress and they will the discrimination between healthy and a, a vegetation suffering from a stress will be enhanced as we can see here. And this is these are the examples of uh, at continental scale or country scale uh, UK and Northern Ireland and some part of Europe as here. So, this is the NDVI of uh, June 2003, this is the NDVI of October 2003. You can see that uh, how this uh, uh, NDVI has increased or decreased. So, in October because now on this is the onset of uh, winter and you are having very less NDVI value, but in case of June uh, which is you are having a full of greenery and NDVI is touching even up to 1. So, that is the uh, you can assess that how vegetation cover at a uh, if we because generally we employ coarse resolution data. So, at country scale or continental scale and this uh, vegetation conditions can be assessed. Now, uh, further to this uh, there is a further analysis which is called PCA or principal component analysis uh, where we use the scatter, scatter plot two dimensional histogram. We have already discussed when we discuss histogram and scatter plots. So, uh, we will just directly go for this and I, I will explain on uh, this graphics that uh, we plot band 1 and band 2 like this. Now, if they are correlated like this, uh, this is this showing that they are 
very much correlated. So, if then then uh, then this uh, origin is shifted in the center and this rotation is there. So, this uh, becomes so the origin instead of here is shifted here and uh, is, uh, the principal component 1 this is aligned with the maximum variations which are present between these two image, two bands and the, the next one uh, is the P C 2 which is perpendicular to P C 1. And now think that uh, if you are having a multi band data or multi spectral data, so you can uh, graphically I can represent uh, mainly uh, three components P C 1, P C 2, P C 3, but in uh, with using uh, digital image processing uh, softwares we can in, we can go for many come uh, not only 3 but maybe 4 5 6 depending uh, what you are trying to achieve so here only i am showing two so because of band correlation which you are seeing here that one sees in band 1 is not so much different from what we see on the band 2 and as per linear algebra we are making eigen vectors where the eigen values contain the contribution of each band to the principal component and this is what uh, we see here that there are the six principal components of band 1, 5, 1, 2, 5 and 7 of lens set TM. 6 is missing because 6 is thermal channel. So, that is not involved in the analysis and this is what you are seeing that principal component 1 will always have the maximum variations and the principal component which is last in this case is 6 which will have maximum noise and as you can see here. So, all noise which is having a, a, a not much relation with any uh, bends will go in principal component 6 in this particular example and maximum variations which are present in the image uh, in these images of uh, 6 channels 6 bands they are all has been uh, and accumulated basically if I can use this word uh, with principal component 1. So, principal component uh, the component 1 image will have maximum variations the last one will have minimum uh, maximum noise nothing else. And uh, now one more step is also possible because now I know that this band is uh, there the other other principal components are highly uh, decorrelated I mean they are not co uh, correlated. So, I can also make principal co composites of principal components. So, I can use principal component 1, 2, 3 and assign uh, say red, green, blue in this thing and I can create a uh, color composite of principal component and uh, such output images not only involving 5 or 6 bands in this case in this example 6 bands, but when we create a color composite they, they are creating much more better images for uh, of, of course, for reliable interpretations. This is how the generally statistics uh, which you will get that uh, band 1 here, band 2, band 3 and uh, uh, band basically here in this is shown as band 6, but uh, band 7 basically and this is correlation matrix and this is correlation eigen vectors are there. So, band, band 1, band 1 definitely it is a 100 percent correlated. So, 1 is there and similarly you can see that how they are correlated band 1 to band 2 is 0.9. So, it is a very high correlation and therefore, principal component analysis is would be much useful in such cases. Now, the next step in principal component analysis is decorrelation stretch which is again based on the principal component analysis like example is shown here that band 1 and band 2 scatter plot is showing a highly correlated data and a, what we can do we can shift uh, the origin as in case of principal component analysis and then a stretch along these axis to occupy the full range which is available for display and by this we are decorrelating each component within each component and at, at the end in a, in a if we see this scatter plot we are occupying a very large area which was not possible uh, with the a uh, normal thing. So, this say uh, band 1, band 2 uh, is a co correlated highly correlated is there whereas band 4, band 7 are less correlated. 
So, in uh, uh, this is this is the situation and uh, if we plot and see this uh, you know cube here this is the original RGB this is how the pixel values are distributed. When we go for decorrelation stretch DCS in RGB color space they are occupying a very large area or a space uh, within that uh, uh, within that uh, color cube which we have been discussing also. And this is another uh, color combination where if I go then I am uh, we are occupying much more area which is available within that color cube. And HSY that the hue saturation and uh, yellow uh, color space then we are uh, occupying little less. So, this decorrelation stretch and in RGB combinations uh, many times will give you much better results with full of colored images. An example here is that this is simple RGB image, but the when the principal component and then we did the decorrelation of different components, uh, principal component of PCs, then and then made a color composite, this is what the result is and see that uh, the quality of discrimination. Here I can discriminate different rocks, different ground features uh, comparatively very easily than on simple RGB image. So, this is the advantage of going for multivariate uh, analysis in digital image processing. And this brings to the end of uh, this uh, lecture. Thank you very much.